Hello, and today what we're looking at is the uh, cooking system, the Jet Boil Zip. I uh, bought this one from um, Decathlon, uh, 59 uh, quite cheap, they normally retail on about £80. Pounds. Um, they're a bit coy about the weight of this, they tell you what it weighs without certain parts. I'm going to give you the weight in a moment just so it weighs all up. The beauty of this system takes tiny gas canisters and this is a winter fuel mix so it should work in the colder weather as well whereas if you get some of the, uh, the other gases they don't actually work that well when it's very cold the weather uh, so this is quite a good, good gas. It's about five pounds for one of these, four to five pounds that's supposed to be able to boil 12 litres of water that's quite a lot of porridge and pot noodles if you're doing diet dehydrated food okay so let's unpack the cooker it's very clever the way it packs away. Uh, guarantee and quite a comprehensive instruction package with it. Um, although it's so easy to use, I don't think you really need the instructions. But it's always an idea to read them. Okay. Now the cooking system is based around this cooking pot, which is an insulated pot, so you shouldn't burn yourself with that. And it's actually got a handle as well and it is possible to drink directly from that. On the top there's a row of holes there, it's a strainer. There's like a drinking spout at that end, uh, so it's quite handy. All right, the bottom part, which um, works as a measuring pot, we can get it off, there you go. Protects also the bottom end of the, the cooking system. This series of fins is where the, the gas will be under here, this series of fins captures the heat, stops it dissipating. Um, a windbreak as well, see flame doesn't blow out. So it's a very e efficient way of cooking without wasting gas. Hence, you can have such a tiny amount of gas with you for a trip because it, it doesn't waste any. Normally, you put pieces of people putting all kinds of um, windbreaks around the cooker and it's not as effective. This thing captures the heat. The only thing it does stay hot for quite some time. So inside there, I think. Yeah, there's little markings inside there for measuring fluids. Um, it's done in millilitres and ounces. Okay. Uh, what I tend to carry with me if I'm carrying water is a water container that's with measurements on anyway, so you can actually pour it out to a certain level. If you know how much water you need in your pot noodle or your cup of coffee, then you don't waste, you, know, you don't boil too much water you don't need. So the rubber cap there comes off, it's a nice and flexible cap. That comes off and reveals the inside. This is where the clever bit starts now because inside here we have this piece which is to stand ordinary pots and pans on. Comes down there. Gas. The cooker itself that sits on top of the gas. And also a stand for the gas container. So let's look how it sets up. There are the legs that open out for the gas container and the gas canister can just sit into those little legs which gives it some stability there's a nice stable little, uh, little unit cap, cut out the cap off there it opens up the gas then this can screw onto this top here anything with the screw said obviously be careful you don't cross thread it it's very gentle to start with, make sure it's getting on the threads there we go, and then just spin it on, don't over tighten it, and that now is ready for the jet boil cup itself which is just sitting on these little keyhole slots here, so it'll sit in and turn and lock itself into position. If you're going to use a normal frying pan or a kettle on this, that's where this piece comes in, I unfold these, like so, And these little cutouts will then sit on the rim, like so, giving you a nice stable platform for a, a bigger pan, a frying pan, etc. So you can use normal cooking cook pots on this on the system. Okay, let's take that off for now. Again, if you're not going to take any cook pot with your normal cook pot, leave that home, save yourself some weight. The jet boil cup itself has got markings on the inside of it. Uh, in millilitres. Uh, I don't know how clear they'll show up on the uh, 
Oh, yeah, you can see them on the camera there. It's an anodized aluminium, this one. You, t you can get titanium. It saves you a few grams in weight, but costs you quite a few more pounds in cost. That's up to you whether that's worth it or not. Now, this feels really, really non-stick, but whether it is or not, I don't know. I'm going to try that in a minute. Everyone seems to do these videos and they show you a uh, how quick it boils uh, a cup full of water. Well, we know that. It tells you on the packet. What I want to know is, if I cook a breakfast, an all-day breakfast, uh, will it wash easily when I'm out there wild camping? Well, that's what we'll find out. So this cup, once it's got its goods in it, you, you slot it in. Again, instead of the two pips there, slot it in, turn. And that now all stays together. It's actually quite solid. Okay. So if you did make something in there, um, like a big pot of soup, then you could, in effect, undo that and just drink straight from the from the cup. You could put the lid back on it, to hold some of the heat in and drink through the dispenser. Or if you just boil something up in there, um, you could strain the water off through the straining vent. Now they call it a jet boil. When you light it, it does sound like a jet plane taking off. It's quite noisy. Uh, but it is incredibly effective. With the cup on, you need to be able to get in there with a the flame. And there we go. So that is a jet boil zip. Uh, the next thing I want to just look at is what you're going to take with your cooking wise, utensil wise. We're trying to stay lightweight and in a moment I'll weigh that, but you can get little tools like these, a little spoon and fork and uh, a little spatula made out of plastic, quite easy. You can actually reach to the bottom of that quite easily with that. Uh, and they're quite handy uh, to have with you. And they do actually lock together then afterwards after you've done with them somehow. Is it that way around? There you go. They're locked together. I think they're about three pounds then. Uh, other options is get ordinary cooking utensils, wooden spatula there, cut down and shaped, so I've got a nice lightweight stirring tool. Again, that cost me about 25 pence, 30 pence. Very, very lightweight. Or you can go for the ultimate in lightweight cooking utensils. Titanium. Uh, absolutely beautifully made, 20 pounds. Incredibly lightweight, very, very robust and durable, easy to clean. Okay. So, I think I've mentioned a little bit previous video, this all day breakfast, a tin breakfast from Asda for about a pound, instead of a bag breakfast that you might buy, like a Wayfarer, which might cost you five pounds, and this has got more nutritional value in it, there's more weight in it, it's actually going to be more filling uh, for uh, a fifth of the price or a quarter of the price, because sometimes you get about four or five pounds. Um, disadvantage with this, you've got a tin which you're going to have to carry with you when you finish with it um, and you've got to open it so you could use a knife with a tin opener on it in. really cold weather you could maintain the heat in the tin, in the pot by popping on your lid um, or you can leave that open so you can get something in and stir it. I think the weapon of choice today I think I'll use the uh, little knife foam spork thing. It's bubbling already this inside here, that's incredible. I don't know if you can hear that, you can see the steam. Turn that right down and simmer it very gently. You can actually search for going for a few seconds and it's actually bubbling away like mad. Smells rather good. The pot itself is actually warm, it's not um, not my part, I can put my hands on that. Even though it's been cooking for a while, the bottom part will be red hot, don't touch that. Um, but this top part is really uh, quite okay. Very, very little heat loss, you can feel some heat here. 
but there is very little heat loss, very little heat above. It really is being absorbed into the, the food inside the tin. Uh, don't know how hot that is. That's almost edible, that's incredible. So if you're hungry now, you could just pour it out. You could eat it out of the pot, pour it out onto a plate, or you could unlock it and eat it from the pot. But be careful, that base is very hot. Um, yeah. There's a big meatball there. Let's just see how hot that is. Mmm. Perfect. That's really nice. And the pot itself, I can hold. It's actually cool enough to hold. But that bottom part, like I said, I can't emphasize that enough. It is very hot. Mmm. That is really good. They're very nice and just what I was hoping to happen has happened. I boiled it a bit quick, I don't know if you can see in there. It looks like it's caught a little bit in the bottom of the pan. Um, it's a bit darkened inside there. So I think it has burned on a little bit, the beans or the tomato sauce. So um, the important thing is now how easy is that going to be to clean. Uh, so I'm going to tip a spot of washing up liquid in add some water that was on 500ml so I put about just short of 100ml of water in there and I'll get that hot and just see if I can uh, swish it around and uh, clean it Shouldn't take long to warm up. That's got it warm the water. I'll just let it soak for a minute. And I'll give it a wipe round then with a um, microfiber cloth. Okay, that should be enough time. Um, can't find me my microfiber cloth, so I'm just going to need a little flannel for now. Because uh, I won't be carrying much with me at this stage. That's just cooled enough to handle now. Unlock that, and you can see in there, there's bits of beans and stuff around the edge. I'm just going to give it a, a swirl round. So it's gone. It actually looks, doesn't look bad in the bottom of the cup now though. I don't know if you can see that where the beans have kept, where it's, where it's, it's held on a bit, where it's, sorry, where it's stuck a little bit. I'm going to pour away the majority of that water and go around it with my, uh, with my cloth and just see if it's actually stuck or if we in fact uh, A successful clean there. Ideally, boiling the bag foods are better. Wipe right around now, and hopefully, we'll look at that. Clean, cleans the whistle. Nothing stuck. Absolutely fantastic. Now the microfiber cloth. I don't know if you've used them before. It's quite a lot of residue stuck to this little flannel, but microfiber. Oh, it takes a little rinse once you've uh, used it. You give it a quick rinse out. This, the, the cloth itself and um, it, it just uh, just comes up clean for the next use. It really is amazing. On that, you can't smell the beans or nothing. It's absolutely clear that. Fantastic. This goes in first. Then the cooker goes over that part. Now the dome of the bottom of the cooker now fits in that recess. There. This piece on the top then that and here making sure it's cool before you put it away complete cooking system and complete the new gas canister 592 grams uh, I've just proved there that it is quite a non-stick system uh, I would imagine if you already did something that totally burned it, it might not be the case, but uh, just there on the, the most basic thing you can cook it is quite non-stick. 
If you shop around, you can get them for less than eighty pounds. Um, the gas canisters always come out. So like I say, about four pound each. Sometimes you get a deal for buying a few. But when you buy these, make sure you buy the winter fuel mix. Um, this is a four season mix. It says on the tin. I hope you can see that there on my fingers. Four season mix, very important. Uh, another idea is to weigh a gas canister when it's new, then weigh one when it's empty, when it's uh, when you've used it for a trip, and you'll have a good idea how much gas you've got left in it to use.